This is the 24 volt nominal battery pack made out of Nissan Leaf modules that powers my big inverter to run my well pump in hurricanes. And this is the charger I built that will take 120 volts DC from my truck's battery pack and top up my well pump battery pack. But I sold the truck so I don't have an easy source of 120 volt DC power anymore. We do have a plug-in hybrid vehicle with a 9 kilowatt hour battery pack and an electric vehicle with a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. So I'm going to be using a 12 volt inverter to get a 120 volts AC out of these guys and I'm going to be modifying this guy to charge my well pump batteries. So I'm going to be replacing this Meanwell SD500H24, which is a DC to DC converter, along with these giant uh, conglomeration of incandescent light bulbs, which were acting as my current limiter, with one of these. This is a Meanwell HLG480H24A. The A is important because that means it has some potentiometers underneath these pots that you can adjust the voltage and the current, and it's a current limiting. Um, this is actually an LED driver. It's usually used for street lights, LED street lights, and so it'll drive a constant current, and unlike this guy down here, which is a power supply, it will not shut off. If it hits the top current limit, it'll just limit it to that current, which means I don't need these guys for current limiting, so that'll make things simpler um, and more efficient. Um, so this guy will run from 100 volts up to 270 volts AC. I'm going to be using it 120 volts off of an inverter. Um, it's a maximum 480 watt. So on the 120 volt side, I'm just going to use wire nuts to hook up these guys, since we're talking about a maximum of 5 amps here. Now on the output side, it's 20 amps total, and they've doubled up here. Maybe in uh, the normal usage of this, you'd go to two different LEDs. Um, but I'm going to put a crimp connector on the end of both of these guys to connect them to these larger cables that go out to the 24-volt battery. So I put individual crimp connectors on both cables, and I figure I will sandwich the uh, positive with two of these and the negative with the two of those. All right, I'm just using a little 8.32nd machine screw and uh, nut and lock washer. The only important thing here is that it fits inside of your heat shrink tubing. You're going to be using it for insulation later. And, of course, don't forget to put the insulation on the wires first. So, ideally, these guys would be in a straight line, but as long as you can get the heat shrink insulation over the top of them, it's fine. Once the electrical's done, just a matter of physically mounting this sucker. Since this is an AC device now, we want to remove the uh, Anderson connector and fuse I would use to plug into my 120 volt DC battery bank. So at the end of this wire, we're going to put on a standard US 515 120 volt plug. And just like with the shrink tubing, you want to make sure you put the end of the plug onto the cable before you attach the cable to the plug. Alright, your black wire goes to the brass screw, and in this case the brass plug. The white wire is neutral, goes to the silver screw, and the green wire of course is ground, which goes to ground. Alright, once you screw these guys in and got that thing tightened down on the end of the plug, it's time to set the voltage. So out of the box, my unit was putting out exactly 24 volts. Now, the absolute maximum for each of these cells is 4.2 volts, so I'm going to only charge them up to 4.1. And I have six of them in series, so that's going to be 24.6 volts, and that's going to be what I want to set my voltage to. So there's these two rubber plugs, voltage adjust, current adjust. I'm assuming the current is going to be set to maximum, so I don't need to adjust that, but I do need to ump the voltage up. All right, way down there in that hole is a potentiometer that you need to twist to adjust the voltage. 
So we are going to turn this guy on and adjust it to 24.6. All right, the only thing left to do now is tuck these wires in and button this sucker back up. All right, so the battery's at 23.9 volts. When I turn this thing on, you can see it's putting in 21 amps, about 500 watts into this guy. It's actually a little bit better than the specs say it'll do at 120 volts, so I'm happy with that. And when I turn it off, you can see that the battery voltage goes back down to its previous level. So it should be pointed out that this is a battery charger. It's set to the right voltage, but it does not have a BMS on this battery. I have a separate balancing charger that I use to keep the cells balanced, and I don't use this unattended. This is just for hurricanes to top that guy up to run the well pump. So um, this is not a permanent or unattended solution, so you'll definitely need a proper BMS if you want to do something like this when you're not running it attended.